Hey everyone, it's Sammy from Scrap Masters Paradise. I just wrapped up another video, but I'm not sure when this one's going to go up. It's gonna be a while because I need to find me a printer. I mean, I have a printer picked out. I like a certain model. I want to be able to print. And if you see the title, you'll know we're talking stamp inventory. And I'm thinking it's gonna be a stamp and die inventory so I can use all the dies, punch out the shapes, have everything in one book, be able to flip through it. I also plan on potentially skinning them in and digi planning so that I have it in a digital form as well. I'm just not sure about the logistics of that part. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be duplicating it and having the paper one, but I'm gonna start with the paper one at first and then I may just digitize the whole thing and go digital all the way. So I don't know, but for now, I plan on making a digital stamp and die inventory. And how I'm going to do so, I've got some plans. I ended up showing this a while back. I ended up purchasing a giant thing of Nina. This is just their medium white paper, which is fine. For this project, it's perfect. I was hoping that it was gonna be cardstock, but it clearly is not cardstock. It's just like a, a nice weight. Oh boy, and they, it says classic crest on the paper. That's wild. You can see it if you're like holding it up to the light. The paper has a little thing that says classic crest on it. That's really cool. Like you can't see it laying down. Anyway, so I got the wrong paper for what I was planning on getting, but it'll actually be better because I was thinking in my new printer, I don't know how well cardstock's going to print on. I don't want it to get jammed up in the printer, which I've had problems with in the past. So it'll actually work better for what I'm doing. So I plan on using this. I just bought a whole ream of this specifically for stamp inventory and I thought I could Copic color on it too, but this is, this is pretty thin. I'm not sure I'm gonna Copic color on this, but I can also just use it for the printer paper. And then I have an A5. This is just an A5 ring planner that I got from Michaels, I'm pretty sure. I think it's just like a Michaels brand thing way back in the day, but it's super cute, bright pink and metallic. Love the flamingo. I'm gonna use this. I already have a punch for this and I can just cut the pages. I'm planning on just cutting them in half and punching them, sticking them in. I can make my own little divider tabs out of probably thicker cardstock since this is so thin. And then I can make different sections. I can move things around and make it all cute and nice and have it all in one little book that I can just flip through. And I'm not going to measure this paper down. I think it will be fine as a half sheet, which I'm gonna cut one and see. So I just cut these at five and a half. Oh yeah, I think that's gonna be just right. I mean, it'll not be the same size as that paper, but it will work. So let's punch it. This is actually January 1st, by the way, when I'm actually filming this. So. I will continue on with this video, but this is my idea, is I can have all the stamps there, and this is a really good size for a whole little stamp set. Maybe not so much for like the bigger stamp sets, but for a regular size stamp set, that's plenty of room. I can just print more as I get more stamps and things, but that's my plan, It's just to use this, have it all in the book. And I think it's actually good that it's not cardstock weight because I can fit a ton of these pages in. I wasn't sure if I had cardstock and it was gonna work in here. And I thought also I could use some discs and do a disc bound book as well. But I liked the fact that it would be ring bound, contained, covered up with the big fluffy cover. These are like really padded. But that's my plan moving forward to do the stamp inventory. So this is way, way later. I finally did end up getting a printer. It does have a scanner on top. So I'm very, very excited to be able to work on my project that I had started. I do need to make some sort of cut file to make dividers, but I haven't done that yet. I can just cut those with my Silhouette Cameo. But for now, I want to work on making the actual stamp inventory. So I had ended up cutting papers and just cutting them in half, and they do end up fitting in this binder, which is really, really awesome but I also don't want to have to go and stamp every single stamp. <laughs> so what I thought I would do is I would try my best to scan in the black sheet and sometimes, this is the stamp damage I've done the last month or so, <laughs> I guess the last two months, but sometimes the stamps are actually stuck to the black sheet like so. And so I'm gonna just take the whole thing and try to lay it on the scanner and see if I can scan it. And I was going to try to see if I can just get two 
on here and I will have a white piece of paper behind it, but I have to make sure I lay the stamp sets the right way to scan. So I was thinking I would do two on the scanner with a white piece of paper actually behind it like this, and then it will print out these on papers and then I can stick them into the binder. So I'm gonna try it out and see if it works. So I just realized the printer being way up here, not a great idea for actually scanning because the scanner is way on the top of the printer. And by the way, I did end up getting this one. It's an Epson ET2760. It is wireless and so far it has been fantastic to have. And um, it's the tankless kind. So you can see the ink lines here. You just fill up the tank and you don't have cartridges, which is really awesome. So, so far we love it. I had set my stuff here, but in order to get up there and see what I'm scanning, I got the kid's step stool. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm lining this up. So here's what the scanner part looks like. I've got the paper just to see where I was gonna line things up. It shows you there's the letter size line. So I can try to line up my two stamp sets downward, uh, facing down and see how it goes. Okay, I ended up hitting coffee. So it's actually just making a black and white copy. Oh, I think it's gonna work. Okay, so this is the black and white version. Okay, so it ended up using a lot of ink to do like the whole thing. I don't know about this. I may end up not doing the white paper behind it. So we'll try with two more stamp sets and see what I can do. I ended up just using the copy feature with black and white. So now we're gonna try without the paper behind it and maybe it'll have a clearer white background. The problem is there's also a gap because of the stamp sets. So I don't know if that's gonna play into it, but so far, I mean, I think I would keep that, but I just don't wanna be wasting ink for all that border. So we'll see if I can get it to look a little crisper. And so here is the chaos and what I think is gonna be the final results. So we have the <laughs> first, second, and third attempts here. So looking at the first one, there's lots of gray. This was the one where I stuck a piece of white paper behind, just the plain old stamp set, like basically pulled it out of the packaging and that's what it came up with. So there's lots of gray, it's a little bit dark. You can definitely see like the shape of the stamps and the glisten of the stamps behind the black sheet. And then this was the second attempt without the white paper and it may be a tiny bit lighter of gray, but I don't think it really made any difference having the white paper or not. So if you don't wanna do the third option, which I'll talk about in a minute, definitely you don't need the white paper behind it. So it'll save an easy step. And then the one that looks the absolute best, which is probably what I'm going to be doing moving forward, is taking all of the stamps off of the sheet. And I tested two different kinds of stamp sheets here and you'll see a tiny subtle difference. So for the Let's Go stamp set, I took all the stamps off and the plastic pieces are separate. So the front and back plastics are separate. And that would give a really clear, crisp image. You can still see the very faint lines from the edge. And then the other stamp set, this is one called Critter Crowd. This is a Simon Says stamp set. This one has a sticker connecting the two sheets. So when you're peeling it up, you can grab the stamps and then stick it back down really easily. You don't have to worry about lining these both up. So this one looks a tiny bit different, but still I think it's great. It has a little bit more of that shadow because you're getting two sheets having a shadow versus one sheet. And on both sides, it has that same little two line thing. And then you can also see a little bit of a darker place where the sticker is. So it wouldn't matter, you'd have to peel the sticker off, which I'm totally not gonna do. But if you wanted it to just not have the lines, you could totally cut this apart if you really wanted to. I'm just gonna leave it like that. But I definitely like this look a whole lot better. It doesn't waste nearly as much ink as these ones will waste. But it is a pain in the butt to have to take all the stamps off of the sheet. So that's what I did. I took all the stamps off. Now I have to stick all of them back on. <laughs> so I've got two piles of stamps here. So that is a little bit obnoxious and tedious, but it totally will work. It gets the job done. And I think I will do that versus stamping every single stamp. I'd rather just do this. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I have seen people just peel the whole backing off and then try to stamp the whole sheet of stamps, but I don't have good results doing a whole lot of stamps like that. 
So I don't think that's for me. I don't think I'm gonna do it that way. I think I'm gonna do the printer way. This is obviously quite a job, so I'm not gonna be doing it all at once. It will be one of those things I work on over time. But I thought today, since I got brand new stamps, I would go ahead and get all of these stamps done and play around with it a little bit. Now, as far as these stamp sets go, I think I'm gonna still just give them their own sheet, even though I could fit more on the sheet. But I think I'll just do two at once like this, even though they're smaller. So that's the plan moving forward. I think with the greeting farm images, I may do four to a sheet because they're single images versus a stamp set. I'll do the whole stamp set as one page. And that way I can flip through my little binder and have little categories for things. I'm really excited to have everything so I can just flip through and I have to flip through tons of stamps because I have stamps stored in different places. And this will give me one little book. And as I finally finish this project up, as I add new stamps in, it'll be easy to just do a few stamp sets at a time here and there to get them in the book. So for now, that's what I'm gonna just work on. I'm gonna do these couple of stamps and I'll show you what the beginning of the binder looks like. I don't have anything organized yet as far as like categories. I don't even have the divider tabs or anything yet. But I think this will be one of those ongoing projects that I'm gonna work on and then film along the way with you guys. Like, go ahead and stamp inventory with me so you guys could make cards or work on your stamp inventory. And I can just make the video while I'm in here doing this. We could talk about scrappy updates and news. Not the most thrilling subject, but for some of us stamping nerds, it might be an actual thrilling subject. <laughs> oh, so also for the stamp inventory, the black sheets have the names on them. So it has the company name sometimes and also the actual stamp name. So if I were to be stamping the stamps, I'd have to write that in, whereas I don't have to do that if I scan these guys. So I hope you guys like it. I'm just gonna stick these ones back on now. It is a bit of a tedious endeavor to take them all off and then stick them all back on, but I think I really like the results of it. I think it's just one of those things where you're gonna do it one time, it's gonna be tedious and annoying, but you'll get it done and then you won't have to do it again. And it'll be nice to have all the stamps organized in one place. Yeah, some of these are hard to tell what they are because they're so skinny. Some of these ones are tiny. And when I was going to test it out, so I grabbed this one thinking, oh yeah, it's got really big stamps. And as I'm peeling them off, I realize how many teeny tiny stamps <laughs> this collection actually had. And it was a lot of teeny tiny little stamps to peel off. And now it's a lot of teeny tiny stamps to <laughs> stick back on because these Little shapes are very small. Let's see, where's that? It's kind of like a little matching game. But I'm actually really excited to get this done. I had had the idea for this for a long time and then I thought we're gonna be buying a printer. I need to just wait and hold off doing it. So the first part of this video has been done for a long time. But I never could get my printer in stock. That's the printer I had been wanting. And I couldn't find it in stock anywhere for just months and months because everybody's working from home and had to buy a printer and they were just back ordered for so long. I finally got one. I was really excited to find it. Now I can actually work on this project that I had on hold for months and months and get it working. So I hope you guys like this video. I will end up doing, like I said, I'll be doing some more stamp inventory videos as I keep working on this. For today, I'm just doing this stack and then I'm just planning on cutting them in half and punching the holes. So I'll show you the end result of today's progress. Okay, here is the stack. So rather than having to flip through all of these to find what I need, this stack is now condensed into just a teeny tiny stack of paper. So I can have the stamps in different places. So far, I really like it. So it's got the names and company name on most of these, which is also really nice. Of course, I'll have to write it in for like the single stamps that I don't have the sheets for and the rubber stamps that don't come with sheets like this, but there it is. I kept the same ones. <laughs> I wasn't gonna redo them. 
but I love it. I love being able to flip through and see everything in there. I will have categories and stuff at some point. For now, I'm just getting something together and I'm gonna work on going through other stamps, like new stuff here. This is stamps and dies, but quite a bit of stampage in here that need to be gone through. And it's gonna be fun. So this is gonna be a work in progress, but I'm happy with my first actual attempt at scanning things and figuring things out. And I may end up just going the total lazy way and not taking them all off because that was quite a chore to take them off. And it's more of a chore to even stick them back on. There was one specific set, this one, where these ones were super tiny. And I'm like, is that a two? Is that a four? I don't know. I have to look at them super close. <laughs> Same with this one. There was a lot of little doodads to take off. But it does look a whole lot better, like this versus that. But I totally could just make do with that. It's not that big a deal. I can still see everything. And it would be just so much easier to slap the stamp sets up there versus having to take everything off. So I may end up going back and forth between how patient and industrious I feel at any current moment when I'm working on this. But for now, I think that's a great start. I hope you guys liked this video. It was a long time in the making to finally start this. So I'm really excited to get working on this. I will have some sort of update videos. Maybe once a month, I will sit down in here for 30 minutes or so and work on this until I can get it done. And then I have a nice organized book. So I'm hoping to work on this steadily and get everything organized. I really would love all of my supplies to be organized and inventoried so I know what I have and I can easily find what I need. So I hope this gives you guys some inspiration for things that you can do as well. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.